Continuing our look at the electromagnetic spectrum, we were last looking at um, infrared and radio waves, and now let's actually go to the other end of the spectrum. So now let's do ultraviolet and X-rays and gamma rays. So these are things that are lower wavelength than what we can see is visible as like blue or purplish. We call that violet. So you see that, remember, things that were larger redder than red are called infrared and then after that is radio waves things that are sort of purpler than purple are called ultraviolet and then of course x-rays and gamma rays so let's look at ultraviolet um, we call this uv for short that does all sorts of real effects on us i mean that causes us uh, all sorts of uh, things with our skin for example uh, but uv can actually be pretty cool for example if you can see the sun through a uv filter in other words through ultraviolet this is what the sun can look like which i think looks really really cool keep in mind these are just places where it's been cut but look carefully at sort of the surface right here you can see areas where there's more activity and areas where there's less I mean, the sun is a mega hot ball of, you know, gas. Um, it's actually a plasma. It gives off lots of light, of course, but it's not just one bright uniform ball. It's got lots of storms on it. And these things are actually caused uh, because of this large magnetic effects at the surface. In fact, I want to show you a video because I think this is going to show this same thing right here, but in, in I think it looks really, really cool. So here, again, this is something that can see ultraviolet. Um, but what happens, of course, is that they just make it look different colors for us. So it doesn't really look blue, remember? It's just, uh, that's just a filter that they're using. But look at these little features right here. Look at these things right here, for example. These, these big loops or filaments. I don't know if you can see those there, but I think it's really cool as the sun rotates. You can see these really cool effects right here of what's happening. The sun can actually eject these things. They're called coronal mass ejections. And they can have, you know, billions of tons of material can fly out at us. There, like one just went, for example, there. I think it's really, really cool, these different features that we're seeing on the sun. And those are helped by looking at it in ultraviolet as one of the filters, for example. So if we look at uh, past ultraviolet, of course, there's x-rays. We can use those in astronomy, but, I mean, people also use those for practical reasons. I mean, you can take an x-ray of people, for example, and those uh, will have different effects, right? They might go through skin, but then bounce off your bones or other objects. But, of course, x-rays can actually be tuned now so that they don't just bounce off bones. You can do lots of really cool things with x-rays now. But, I mean, this is just one. I think it's an interesting picture here. So x-rays can be used for lots of different things. But again, this is just a color of light. And another color of light, the most extreme one as far as energy goes, or the lowest wavelength, is called gamma rays. Now these are really interesting. We see these in astronomy um, called GRBs for short. So GRB, those are gamma ray bursts. I know that there's lots of astronomers who are working on these because these are some of the most energetic things that happen in the universe, as far as we know. And this is what we think happens. And you can see my videos on uh, astronomy here where we actually talk about the different stages of life of a star. But basically, as a star, as a massive star at least, gets older in its lifetime, it actually starts burning um, you know, hydrogen to helium and then helium to other things. Um, and gets progressively heavier and heavier elements in its core. So you can see this very advanced star here, for example, has uh, iron in its core and it's got magnesium at the next level and then after that silicon and carbon, oxygen, nitrogen and helium and hydrogen on the outer. This is where it's still sort of fusing these. But of course what happens past iron, it can't burn anything past iron, so then the whole thing actually collapses. And when it collapses, if it's massive enough, it may form a black hole. Now, when it forms a black hole, it's thought that there are some mechanisms that may cause you know, energy that goes in has to essentially come out again. Well, it wouldn't really be energy. We could, uh, more accurately, we should say it's something related to momentum. It turns out angular momentum, so momentum of things spinning. And it turns out that it's thought that when a very, very massive black hole is formed after a star has gone supernova, they think that it can emit these high energy jets right here and these right here are gamma rays that's the greek letter gamma here so these gamma rays can come out at this and of course down at that angle down there 
So if we happen to be located, remember space is in 3D, so if we're located over here, we're never really going to detect these gamma rays. But what if those happen to be lined up with us? What if the Earth happens to be over here? Then we might actually see these gamma ray bursts. So we'll actually see a really short period, very high intensity burst of gamma rays. And these are very exciting for astronomers for a number of reasons, but it's basically trying to understand some of the most energetic events in our universe. So all this just to show that we can do so many interesting things just by understanding the electromagnetic spectrum. So it's not just the colors of light that we can actually see. We humans have made devices to see lots of other colors of light, things that our eyes can't see. For example, infrared and radio and radar and TV and radio waves like this with FM and ultraviolet and X-rays and gamma rays.